Welcome to Intuitive Celt. Today we'll be talking about Putin and Russia and what's ahead for both uh, in the next couple years. So as usual, I'll start with asking for an image. Um, I think we'll start with uh, Putin in the next six months, what's ahead for him. So I see um, a balance beam and parallel bars like gymnastics. Um, so the word and the image of the balancing beam and then the visual of a gymnast kind of holding on to the parallel bars and preparing to do, you know, flips or whatever. Um, I have been getting messages the last uh, few weeks and over actually the last couple years with regard to Russia and America, but the last few weeks has been more about Putin and Russia as a country um, on its own. Um, Putin, the uh, my guides have been showing me that he was born with uh, some type of illness and the word amyloidosis has been coming up. Um, now I have health issues and, and I've had lab tests to rule or check on amyloidosis. So I'm not sure if that's in my mind because I've been having health problems or if that's a word that they're telling me regarding Putin himself. But it's something like that and also that he has a heart issue since the childhood. Um, and it's like the heart and the blood, uh, the blood vessels. So um, it it's kind of like a chronic illness or immune disorder maybe, or chronic health, uh, heart issue. Um, but that's what they've been showing me the last couple of weeks, as well as hearing the phrase a tu brute from about Caesar and him uh, being stabbed by the members of um, the Rome, Roman Senate. This um, idea of people surrounding him that he in theory would trust and them literally backstabbing him and killing him. So that phrase as well as the image of Caesar um, has been coming. Uh, my guide's been showing me that for the last few weeks. Even though he, my guide's been showing me that he's had an issue with his health his whole life and that it's been deteriorating lately especially, um, they have shown me and told me that he is very much um, very, very intelligent and very analytical and um, kind of like that 40 chess kind of thing. But um, so it's brains versus brawn, like he is instead of kind of getting a little bit of both, he's got a lot of the brain and, and very little of the, the physical vigor that that he tries to portray. So um, they've kind of shown me that all of this is staged so that he can look as what he thinks is valued in that country, um, but that since a child he's had to hide this health issue. Um, and again, they're showing me the heart and the blood um, circulating. So as a child, he had to be, you know, three times smarter than anyone else in order to be able to succeed in the ways he did. And, and he was trained, you know, to be a spy and, and with the SSB and FSB and um, I'm sorry, I've, I've blanked on the, the name it was before it was the FSB, but the it's just uh, he's had to calculate things and he can calculate, you know, 40, 50, 70 steps ahead. And that because he's had to hide this disability or whatever weakness as he perceives it, his mind is kind of like it's a weakness and he's very critical of it. But um, he, because he had to have that level of deceit, he can spot liars anywhere around him. And he trusts no one, especially at this point. Um, the oligarchs surround themselves, or surround him because of opportunities. Um, they all, in some form, work for the government or have connections. And therefore, it's more of like an oligarchy where these, this, these rich families and very, very wealthy 1% rule because of um, access and financial gain. Um, after Crimea, there were sanctions put on Russia and Putin had sold off, uh, prior to that years, um, over years, Putin had sold off access to ports and, and warehouses and, and 
manufacturing things around the world in order to gain cash, in order to have cash on hand, in order to do things like Crimea and, um, you know, this, he's fixed a lot more elections than just metal dinars. He's had a lot of spy games and things, all sorts of things <laughs> um, around the world. So after the sanctions were put into place, he kind of, all the money that he had collected um, from selling off access to all these different things, he had all around the world in, in like a hundred different banks and in all, every country. Um, but that the access to that money was shut off with the sanctions after Crimea. Uh, I am flushing. That's part of my autoimmune disorder. It'll go away. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just look like a cherry at the moment. And that's okay. So with regard to deceit and trust, after because he lost access to a lot of money and the oligarchs themselves have money all over and houses and everything in many countries, they were pissed to have lost um, their own, you know, connections or, you know, is this access to this money or that. So they were angry um, at Putin, even though a lot of them knew what was going on. They were pissed and kind of was able to blame him because, of course, he directed this to happen. Um, people around him have always been around him in a way that he's never trusted. It's kind of like if you were a child of a wealthy family, um, people, you never know if friends are with you because they like you or if they're with you because you have money. Um, this has been his life and especially because he's had to hide his physical frailties or, or issues. Um, he's never been able to trust readily and that now because there's been stress on the money of what these oligarchs value as money and power, um, he knows that they're not there for, they don't hang around him to be friends with him because they like him. They hang around him because they, he gives them access to more money and to more power. So they lost a lot and they're mad. And a lot of them have, my guys have been showing me that a lot of them have been talking um, amongst themselves about how they can like stage a coup and take over and they want to have take Putin down like Caesar. Uh, they want to stab him and whether they want to kill him or just remove him, um, he's not going to be there long. Uh, my guide's been telling me about two to four years and that's not just in power but in for li his, his life that he's not going to be around for very long. Um, I'm not sure what my guide's been telling me. It's like kind of a 50% that he would be removed and then die later and 50% that he would be killed and therefore be removed and die. Um, it, it's kind of, it, it's not decided yet. Um, we have free will and things can change. So everything that my guides tell me, they of course tell me, you know, that maybe this is more likely or that, but this one, it's like a 50-50. It's like 50 here and 50 there kind of thing. Um, so the balance, balance, balance beam, excuse me, and the parallel bars, he is trying to balance a lot of, like there's a lot of plates, thank you, um, on, you know, uh, sticks where they spin plates in the circus. And um, wire, walking on the wire, thank you, that's another good visual, that he's very, um, his life is very precarious at the moment. He's had a lot of people murdered and killed and poisoned and made sure to poison him in a way that people knew who did it and so now that he has a lot of people that know these kind of secrets and know what else he's done and how he's uh, meddled in other countries' elections and um, all his different programs all around the world that he's spinning all these plates and walking on this tiny wire. Oh, okay, so it's at the same time that he's walking on the wire and spinning the plates, trying to balance in a lot of different ways. Um, these plates are getting more and more wobbly and he definitely is, he knows if he slips once, every, is, everything goes down, including his, like, he knows that his life is on, like, a razor wire, a razor thin, kind of, um, he knows that they all have reason to want to take him out. 
and he knows that previously they tolerated him being in power because they could gain financially and he allowed them to have power and you know government jobs in order to have access to more power and things like that but because he's done some things that have led to repercussions that hurt them he no longer has the the um he no longer can give them anything that they would want uh so they are discussing amongst themselves about how to throw a coup and how to get him removed half of them want to kill him in order to remove him and the other half are like just just get him out of power and just we don't want to kill him necessarily um the issue is if and when they do this then who's going to lead they all want to lead personally they all feel that in their mind that they can lead and they'll find a way to make it happen no one's agreed on who's going to replace putin they just agree that putin has to go um so this coup is like a boiling pot thank you that's about to uh, spill over boil over um and it's they've already begun the planning stages and a lot have already attempted like poisoning or whatever and he has food tasters and um he knows his life is in danger the parallel bars the balance beam the tight walk and the plates he knows that he's um like one one tiptoe away off of this balance of balancing everything and he could all of it could come crashing down the reason that these people have let him lead is because he he lets them get away with anything and that way he knows that at least they won't be coming for his position and his neck <laughs> um yeah okay so not only his position in power but coming for his neck is in you know his life he knows that this is the people have tried to kill him before um a lot of times apparently but that this is serious that people that like okay that like he would sleep not in bed um but they're kind of showing me that he would feel safe enough to sleep around them I meaning maybe in like the same house or in the same room um if you don't trust someone you're not about to fall asleep especially if you think they would kill you you're not about to fall asleep in their house or let them sleep in your house so he's at that point where he's not only got to keep one eye open all the time like he used to but now he knows he can't sleep at all that he's got to be on guard 24/7 and watch his back um and he has a lot of people that protect him like his food taster and his bodyguards but even though those people he no longer trusts like if you pay someone enough money they will switch sides you know all of them are mercenaries basically is um thank you the the idea that they're showing me so th not only is this coup being attempted and coming up very soon but the civil unrest in the country the the citizens of Russia are very unhappy um it's not quite back to the point where they're they're starvation and they have to wait in 4 hour long lines to get you know head of lettuce or a loaf of bread and not know what uh the rations and things are it's not quite as bad as the cold uh the cold war days and this those sanctions but it's to the point where a lot of them are not north korea starving but starving very much and suffering and working you know toiling the soil and working very hard and their hands are are callous type hard work um and they're they're not getting what they used to get like the, because not just the sanctions that cut them off financially that putin and therefore the government but because of putin and all these oligarchs taking more and more of the resources less and less of the resources are available for the citizens of Russia. So there has been um throughout time there's always been citizens that aren't happy with the country and its leaders and would, you know, think things, but at this moment, just like with Tsar Nicholas, at this moment people are at the boiling water over boiling over in the pot and they aren't about to tolerate it again their family they remember the cold war they remember being children and having to stand in these lines for food and not knowing what food would be there when you get there or if any would be left um they remember their parents and their grandparents talking about the level of suffering that they went through so 
they know how bad it can get and it's already gotten really bad a lot of the rural areas they are starving um there's like just potatoes they're showing me that like they're digging up the soil for potatoes and that's all they got you know um it's reaching a famine not not the entire country but a very large uh, enough people that it's that's not okay um not that it ever is so regardless of this coup that is stirring and ready there is a civil rebellion coming as well and my guides have been showing me that there's like in barns that there used to be like three or four people these barns all over the country that would meet in a barn and talk you know uh, about what they can do to organize and to go against the government but now instead of it just being three or four people you know in a community now it's hundreds of people in the barn talking about this a barn I guess symbolizing like a, a little safe place without um, being uh, recorded or or um, having worries about you know you know phone phones being tapped and you know I mean Russia has a lot of surveillance so the barn to me they've been showing me indicates a way that like there's no electricity it's just a simple place but it wouldn't be able to be surveilled as easily um, so now hundreds of people in all these barns all over this country and lots and lots more dots keep showing up like if you look from like space you'll see like all these lights in all over Russia have more and more dots are lighting up all around the country and each of those dots represents another barn of a hundred plus people and that these community organizers then will group together like once a month or however, however often and that they will discuss on a large scale what we they could do as a civilian group um, and then there's like a handful of, of like five or six people that know the entire country what's what's going on and and they have plans of how and when um, that they can they can kind of rise up so there are two revolutions coming for Russia one is the coup with from oligarchs and one is the citizens of Russia speaking up for their needs and that they want a democracy um, not necessarily the US but that they want to have their voice heard and they're sick of the oligarchs taking all the resources and they're sick of having to stay silent and they're sick of putting up with it um, Putin doesn't trust anybody and the citizens of Russia know that Putin has um, they're kind of seeing that he's got a weakness now he's got a vulnerability like a, a dragon with one scale missing and you can pierce through the dragon's armor by getting that one little scale that's that's missing um, so they're trying to plan how best to do this it's not they are kind of showing like protests in the street but the top five or so people of this civilian revolution um, really are trying to plan a way that would be organized not violent not messy but if it had to they would defend themselves but they're trying to do it in a way where um, they could they don't want to kill everybody like all the oligarchs and whatever some people would like that but these people want an organized uh, way in order to change the government to a democracy there's a quote and I'm sh not sure who it is it's Thomas Jefferson or someone like that who said um, like a, a violent unrest a violent civil war does not lead to a peaceful government and um, we've seen in Egypt after Gaddafi that there were three factions that competed and you really need to have an organized way to have a smoother transition versus just tribes of people trying to figure out now who's going to lead and killing amongst themselves so it's getting to a point where they've all they planned out how they're going to have this civil revolution but now they're just waiting for the distraction so like if Crimea happened or if Russia were in the news or something happened that caught the attention and distracted Putin and the oligarchs then that's their time and they're just waiting for that distraction to come the oligarchs themselves are just um, they're planning it I don't know what they're waiting for my guides haven't really quite shown me what they're waiting for but that Putin's days are numbered 
like the calendar is just counting down and Putin knows it and he also has heard whispers of this civil revolution and he's heard a lot more whispers about the people around him um, with this coup and um, he he feels like a trapped animal he he's just trying to balance all these plates and also meanwhile trying to continue the you know other countries you know the spy programs and things that he's got running all over the world but it's his own back like it's his own home that that he's got to worry more about at the moment um like after this throughout this week my guys have also shown me that like the the oligarchs are playing uh, dice you know shaking the the leather cup and throwing dice and they're screaming and drinking and cheering and they then at the end of the night they lose all the money and they come home drunk and the wife is is pissed so the idea that the oligarchs are just gambling away the resources and money and that when they come home or the the wife being the the citizens of Russia are pissed so it's boiling over it's to a point where the civil rebellion is just waiting for a distraction and the oligarchs I'm not sure what they're waiting on um, time okay so just time a time's up like a like a uh, um, sorry a timer in your kitchen like da, 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 ding 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 so there's something about time uh, time's up coming so I hope this is helpful I do want you to know as always my guys want you to know that this actually will lead to a democracy um, in Russia which is long been needed and that it's going to be rough for a few years for them um, but that they will actually be able to have votes and an election that's not you know um, taken over they will be able to speak freely without fear of recrimination or, or surveillance or um, you know all the it's it's not easy to live in Russia or China or North Korea or anything um, Russia is on its way to a new, uh, like a new world for them, um, a new millennium um, for them. That term keeps coming. I, it's not technically the new millennium, but it, they're showing me like it's a big change. And so it's going to be a new world for them and it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be a, a wonderful thing for the, s s s s pardon me, the citizens of Russia. But then it's also going to be better for the world that we don't have this aggressive country um, that we have to worry about. Because the citizens of Russia don't want to take over Crimea and the Ukraine, or they don't want to have, you know, missiles um, right off the coast of, of Central America, which they have recently done, just like the Cuban Missile Crisis. They don't want to go to war with anyone. They don't want to fix elections. The Russian citizens just want to have. A life where they can uh, prosper and they can have freedom to do what they want and they don't want to hurt other people they just want to have a better life for themselves and their children um, it's really going to be beautiful to be able to see after centuries of really horrible leaders um, very violent leaders that they'll be able to have a democracy of sorts um, I don't they're not quite showing me a leader but kind of giving me the hint of like a female is going to lead a charge but I don't know if that's like just part of the civil rebellion like one of the um, like Gettysburg type thing or if they're not quite signaling that she'll be the, the head of um, like prime minister of Russia but they are saying a woman is going to be very important in uh, in this civil rebellion and with the new government being founded so it's going to be amazing. It's going to be pretty awesome for the citizens of Russia who just have been suffering for way too long, generations of them. Um, and that Putin, his health is deteriorating with the heart and the blood. Um, and people know it. And uh, he he's mentally brilliant, but he can't, um, he can't fix it. There's no, you know, he can't hide it anymore. He can try to hide it, but people now know and he's at a point where he might just be dead in four years because of it, like cancer, or, but it's like a heart and like an enlarged heart maybe. Um, and that the blood, I don't know what it is, but regardless, his heart is starting to fail and his health has really, really gone downhill 
in this past year and the coup d'etat is is like right on his back the the senate of, of rome is surrounding him with knives um and it's going to be one of his closest advisors who he actually could fall asleep around like sleeping in his house um like this a to brute it's going to be one of his closest advisors i wouldn't say the word friend because none of them are friends but um it's going to be rough for him but he's done so much damage that karma is going to come for him um and then the oligarchs are just going to fight amongst themselves and um that's not going to go well for for them either so it is going to be a beautiful time for the russian country uh, the country of russia the citizens um and it's it's going to lead to a lot of wonderful things for them and it's going to lead to peace um because russia has always kind of been this um you know fear in the back of our mind that we never quite can fall asleep um i like this idea of sleep the peacefulness that we can rest and not worry um so that's kind of what they're showing so i hope you have a wonderful afternoon and I hope, or day, morning, evening, and just know that worldwide things are actually really, um, it's going to be like a new millennium for the whole world. It's going to be really beautiful. Thank you for joining and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.